Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. I'm Papa Boris, and I welcome you to my brand new Hearthstone series, Quest to Legend. It's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Now that the ladder has reset, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take a deck, and I'm gonna try to see if I can get to Legend with it. That's, that's pretty much it. Now, I'm not a great constructed player, so the odds of me actually getting to Legend are pretty low, but hey guys, it's about the journey, it's about the quest, not the destination. Anyway, in this series, I am going to focus on one deck, and I would like to avoid net decking if I can. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with net decking or taking decks from the internet. However, I would just like to see if I can make my own, and I would like to see if you'll help me. I'm not a great constructed player. I'm not that great at making decks, but as we play along, I will make changes to the deck, and if you have suggestions, please post them in the comments, perhaps with your help. I will, in fact, be able to propel myself to greatness. So, we're going to start with my Spiteful Rogue deck. I did make a video of this deck a while back, but it's changed since then. So the basic idea of this deck is... We got Spiteful Smith, which I think is an amazing creature, and I just wanted to make a rogue deck that had this creature. So it's really resistant to removal, and it turns your rogue dagger into a fiery war axe when it, he when it is enraged. We also have the Gadgeton Auctioneer in combination with some cheap rogue spells like Backstab and Preparation for some card draw. And then Conceal and Deadly Poison, which cost one mana apiece, um, help the rogue draw cards off the auctioneers as well. Got some Eviscerates for removal. Shiv, which I'm not actually 100% certain should be in this deck. And there's our Spell Slash Removal Suite, all very short. For more removal, we have the Perdition's Blade. And then we get to the creatures. So there's Blood Mage Thalnos for some card draw and some spell damage to help improve the quality of our backstabs and our uh, fans of knives. The uh, Defias Ringleader and the best two drop in the game, Amani Berserker, are here as well. For three drops, I've got the Golem, which I think is kind of mandatory. I don't know how you make a deck without Harvest Golem. And Flesh Eating Ghoul, which has some explosive potential. If you can control the board and get a Ghoul out, it's kill or die for your opponent. We have Chillwind Yeti, just a solid mid-range creature, and then of course our two five drops, the Auctioneer and the Smith. Lots of stuff in this deck is up for change. I don't ever see myself removing the Spiteful Smith or the Backstabs, which is my favorite spell in the game. Everything else is totally, totally up for grabs. So uh, feel free to give me all the comments that you like as we play these games. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, play Ranked. Each of these show episodes will probably be about an hour or so. And um, I'll be pretty happy if I can make it to rank 5 with this deck, because making it to rank 5 with a deck that you made yourself without, you know, stealing any ideas from the internet is pretty impressive. Wouldn't you know it, our first opponent is a rogue. I was under, I was under the impression that rogues are not that common or popular, but uh, we're up with a pretty bad opening hand. Don't really want to keep that, that, or that. I'd really like to get my actual 2 drops, if possible. There aren't that many in this deck, but those would be ideal. Here we have Backstab. Now, Backstab serves an important role, and not only does it kill things, but also um, it uh, can be used to trigger combo for your Defias Ringleader, if you should have one, which, of course, I don't. I got Preparation again. Now, this is, there's just one of these in the deck. I find that having two is awkward, because honestly, there aren't that many Rogue spells that benefit from this, but it is really handy for Fan of Knives and sometimes Eviscerate when you have a Gadget and Auctioneer out. Okay, no turn one play for my opponent. Sadly, I don't have anything as well. Uh, since I have Perdition's Blade back here, I will go ahead and just um, swing at my opponent's face. You don't want to waste these charges, but you also don't want to waste the opportunity to deal damage either, so I figured I might as well whack her a little bit. We have a Novice Engineer. Well, that'll promptly die to my other blade. And then we can play a Harvest Golem, so we're off to a decent start. Fan of Knives, also a good card. You know, Fan of Knives was in here um, back before the the Warlock nerf when uh, the stupid Warlock decks with the Blood Imps were in full force. Maybe now Fan of Knives isn't as good. Although it is pretty strong if you can get it out with the Blood Mage Thalnos. Right, this is a pretty good answer to what I'm doing because right now I don't have any way of killing this thing without hitting it twice. And that's not good. Um, I could ping it with the weapon and then hit it again, but that doesn't seem really all that great. Although, what, am, what else am I doing with my life here? There's really nothing for me to do. Um, shoot. Yeah, I can't buff this in any way. Backstab's pointless. Yeah, we're gonna do this. So, it's not ideal by any means, giving her two cards. So, it's kind of like, um, an arcane intellect that, uh, also took a, you know, dealt a damage to me and took a charge off my weapon. Not ideal, but we have a good turn next turn. We can do Auctioneer, Preparation, Fan of Knives, draw two cards. No, sorry, draw three cards and get a 4-4 in play. 
Lepernome is a decent creature here. It's kind of making me waste my weapon because um, I obviously the regular old dagger can kill this just as well. Interesting that she's not playing a Lepernome until now. And interesting that she's doing all this with me having a golem in play. Anyway, that means that Fan of Knives doesn't really work. It actually does absolutely nothing. <laughs> Great. Okay. Ah, there's the ringleader. Um, okay. We're gonna do this anyway. Because this is just a lot of cards. So we're gonna backstab one of them, get a card. Um, then we're gonna preparation to get a card. This is one of the things you have to understand when you play this deck, is that playing things just to get a card is pretty damn good. Now, I could do Fan of Knives or Shiv. I don't see Fan of Knives being all that useful, so I might as well... Like, it's like kind of... It's like Shiv, but it costs one more mana to deal it to everything. Shiv can go to the face, though. Let's just do the Fan of Knives, because it's more expensive. There's the Nemani Berserker. There's another Fan of Knives. I'll hit this with my weapon to preserve the golem, and then we'll swing. So what I'm hoping is that she doesn't have Eviscerate. Granted, she has a bajillion cards, so it's very likely that she does have Eviscerate. Had I top decked into a Conceal, I would have played it with preparation 100%, no questions asked. Since I didn't get a Conceal, I could not hide my Gadget and Auctioneer. So what's most likely coming is some kind of a 3-mana creature, then Eviscerate to kill my Auctioneer. Then I'll have to settle for, I guess, playing a Berserker. And defy a string leader. I'm just gonna back. Okay, so she'll kill it some other way. It looks like it's probably gonna be a Perdition's Blade. Would be the most logical next step. Fan of knives. Oh, okay. So fan of knives and then dagger. It's an unconventional way of killing the auctioneer. Or I guess shiv. Is that what's coming up next? All right, no, it's gonna be dagger. Well, uh, this is actually probably better than her using eviscerate, because she didn't put anything on the board, which I like. And she's gonna take four damage to the face, which I also like. So that's great. I might even go crazy and like do like deadly two deadly poisons and just hit her in the face. We could try to burn her out. Oh damn it, backstab. Okay, well let's do this. And the bandit. Swing with the golem. Gonna make a dagger and I'm not gonna attack. Cause I've got both of my deadly poisons. So um, this thing could be super juiced to five power, turning into an Arcanite Reaper of sorts. That's 10 damage, 10 plus 8 is 18, and then she's pretty much dead to Shiv if these guys get to attack. She's doing this to draw a card, that's awesome, that's two thirds of her mana gone. Uh, unless she plays backstab and s preparation and something, like it's really just not that effective. Ah, ha ha, okay, well, that sucks. So she gave this taunt. She'll, I don't really care that she's killing us with her dagger because it's dealing damage, that's all that I really care about. And we get another ringleader. Okay. I think the move here is I'm gonna backstab this. Um going to enrage my berserker. Let's get some more bandits out here. Fan and knives, fan and knives. Oh my god, I should have shivved first. Well I'll do it now. Eviscerate. Okay, that'll be good to go to the face. So now we'll do this. And we're going for the burn kill here. So if I can attack with this weapon and eviscerate, that's nine damage. If any of these creatures hits, she loses. She's got fan of knives, which she does. I'm in a little bit more trouble. Um, she'd need like a second fan of knives to get rid of these. Or two shivs, I guess. If she daggers one though, then she's dead. This is actually like a really tough fight, considering it's rank 25, I expected it to be easier. Maybe my deck isn't as strong as I thought, but I didn't really get any of my mid-range stuff. I got one Auctioneer, no Yetis, no Spiteful Smiths. I did get the Golem, which was important, both Ringleaders, but I uh, didn't really get a lot of my mid-range creatures. This deck might have too many spells and not enough creatures. Uh, that could be one of the things that we could look to change. Co oh, she still has the coin, wow. That's something. Okay, this? Well, <laughs> this is so weird. This is a rare card. Why would you ever put this into your deck? So I guess this is the kind of, this, this is the kind of freebie sort of a deal that we wouldn't get if we were uh, higher ranked. So we're going to actually get to attack with our bandits against all odds. Boink, and then eviscerate. Well, job done. And a giveaway well played. And that's our first game. 
Well, that was definitely a bit of a tough, tough win for rank 25. So I don't know. But my current thought is that maybe I've got too many spells and not enough creatures. Uh, which would potentially limit how many good draws I can get. And again, I'll, be, I'll play for about an hour, so I started this around 9.02 p.m., so we'll finish shortly after 10 or however long that last game goes, and that's what we'll do in each episode. If I ever hit a roadblock, I'll take some serious time to read through the comments, the suggestions that people have, and then uh, try to edit the deck. Okay, clearly I'm not as original as I thought playing Rogue. Here's another one. And I'm first again. Ugh. Okay, I'm actually going to keep the Flesh Eating Ghoul because creatures are kind of valuable. We get a Harvest Golem, man. Now I really wish I were the second player. So I could coin one of these on turn two, get the Auctioneer. Blech. Pretty slow start. Maybe if I'd made this into more of an aggressive deck, getting rid of some of the spells and putting in some one drops or something to increase my first turn plays beyond hoping I'm second and hoping I have the Ringleader. The last rogue passed, and this rogue also obliged us by passing. I will again swing at her face. I currently don't have, don't have deadly poisons or any particular reason to hold on to this dagger. This is a different rogue. This is Aderm. She will do the same thing I did. And going by the same philosophy that I use in Arena, I'd rather play the Flesh Eating Ghoul after I already have minions. So we'll do this. And do I swing at her face with the dagger? I'll keep that dagger up. We'll hedge my bets a little bit here. Now that I drew Deadly Poison, I regret hitting her in the face last turn. Maybe I just, as a policy, should never attack on turn two. <laughs> South Sea Deckhand has charge. And then she actually used it to combo out a ringleader. Well then. Uh, that's fine, though. I've got the kill. So this is... I've actually got... I can kill everything she has. This is awesome. Just don't play anything. No, don't you even. Nope, dip, 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 Put it away. Put it away. Put it away. Put... No! Backstab. Well, she can kill the golem with her dagger, but since she hit me in the face last time, she doesn't have the dagger in hand to kill the golem as it returns. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The golem's gonna die. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna do the flesh-eating ghoul here. So I've got, um... You know... That... I and mean, I really wish I had enough mana to play Shiv. That would have been great. Backstab there. Here we and then there. Now you might be wondering, well, wait a minute, Boris, why didn't you hold on to the backstab to use it next turn with the Auctioneer? The reason is that if I did that, she could just make a dagger and kill the ghoul with her 2-1. So anyway, she needs an answer to this. It's a bit tricky. She pretty much needs Eviscerate. Backstab and dagger would work as well, but then she would have to uh, take six damage. Does she top deck an eviscerate? Oh my god. Well, shit happens sometimes. No, she top decked an elven archer. Why would you put that in your deck if you're playing constructed? What are you doing with your life, woman? All right, so here, if I keep the novice engineer alive, she'll get to kill stuff. So I'm gonna, oh, I could play these berserkers. They'd be so good. All right, let's make a dagger. Let's kill the archer. And I have to choose now, do I shiv this, or do I play a berserker? I'm going to shiv that thing, which may seem like a bad idea, but the thing is, honestly, um, this ghoul, not only did that make it deal two damage, but my opponent kind of demonstrated last turn an inability to get rid of it. Now backstab doesn't work because it's damaged, the dagger isn't enough. She'd need, like a, I guess an SI agent. Uh, fan of knives, okay. And another fan of knives. Well, that's one way to do it. I'm fine with that. That's okay. Got a pretty good turn here myself. So, got the Berserker. Berserker. Swing in her face. Rebuild the dagger. Got the dagger in hand now. Seven mana next turn. I can play the Auctioneer and Eviscerate. That's a pretty good combo. I'd like to get Preparation. That would be really great. If I could wait until turn eight, I could do the Auctioneer, Poison, and Eviscerate, which would be really sweet. Oh, Wolf Rider. Who plays Wolf Rider? Ugh, that's a good card, though. Does she have a removal for this thing? I've already used my Shiv. One nice thing about Shiv is Shiv is a really great way to enrage these guys. It's also good for enraging your smiths. I just find I don't get to do that very often, in point of fact. Auctioneer, okay. Ah, damn. I wish I had 8 mana. If I had 8 mana, I could run into this golem, kill it with my dagger... 
it would respawn, I could then play the Auctioneer and Phantom Knives. As it is, I can play the Auctioneer, Eviscerate, draw a card, and then kill the damage thing with uh, my Dagger and swing for two. Or I could Gadget Auctioneer, Deadly Poison, draw a card, hit this with my Dagger, Enrage the Berserker. She's used both fans and Knives, she'd have to have like a Perdition's Blade or a Shiv to get rid of this. Okay, I'm gonna try it like this. I don't know if this is the right move or not, but it feels right to me. Ah, I didn't get a spell. That's too bad. So we'll uh, kill the golem. My hope is that she's got these two creatures that both need to die, Esperanto, and hopefully she doesn't have a way to kill both of them. Because she's used fans of knives already. If she daggers this, I'm fine with her taking five damage to the face. I could almost burn her out at that point. Assassinate. Well, does she have a shiv then for this berserker? Or is she going to dagger it? No, she's going to dagger it. Now, it's totally correct to dagger it if it's going to hit her in the face anyway. She might as well hit kill it. But she's getting kind of low now. I mean, I can get her down to 10, down to 6. Yeah, this is this is looking good. All right, what we'll do is um play an auctioneer. Going to eviscerate her face. Get a card. Gonna conceal, so she can't deal with this guy. I have another conceal for next turn as well, that's awesome. Swing for three. And we'll see what happens. So if she gets a taunt down, I could actually be in a little bit of trouble. Six is a little bit high for me to burn her out, having already used one Eviscerate. If I get the other one, I can get her down to two, but if she has a taunt in play, this deck doesn't really have buffs, and it doesn't have that much spell damage. Maybe it could use like the Black Knight or something for killing taunts. Um, so yeah, there is the Control Druid deck that Force featured recently, uh, that he didn't invent, of course, uh, that has lots and lots of taunts. It's got, like, the Sun Fairy Protector, the Defender of Argus, the Ancient Watchers, and, like, Druid of the Claw, which has so much taunt. Vanish! Well, I don't think that's a good card, if I can be perfectly honest. Um, because it doesn't really ever get you ahead. And now, we're just going to be pretty happy to play the Auctioneer. The Flesh and Ghoul. And Conceal, and draw a card. So does she have another Vanish? Is someone really going to play two Vanishes? I guess that's possible. But then I'll just, I guess, replay the, play the two Yetis or something? And then dagger up and start poking her? Well, she has a taunt. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Frostwolf Warlord. Interesting card choices here. She's going to keep on tickling me. That's totally fine. I'm down for a tickle fest. Okay, I can't self-damage the smith, but let's draw two cards. See what we get. Ah, Perdition's Blade. Perfect. So we're going to do... This, shoot it for two, Here we go. swing it for two, and there we go. Sension's a good card, but not good enough, and we get another win. So, uh, at least this deck seems to be better than the other rogue decks that are out at rank 25, which is encouraging. And we made it to rank 24. Ah, uh, yeah. Do I have a win streak? Does that count, or do I have to win, like, more than twice? No, I need, I need to get more than two wins to get a win streak. That's too bad. All right, well, pretty good couple of games. I have to admit, those games were kind of tough. So the fact that they were against rogues and at rank 25 and they were that tough is a little bit worrying. Also, the fact that that rogue could have just beaten me with um, a bigger taunter was a little bit scary. Up against a priest, Misha. Priests should be good against rogues. Part of the reason I like rogue is that there don't seem to be that many priests out right now. All right, well, I think this and this need to go. The Yeti's a very good four drop. I will keep it. I could have increased my chances of getting a Defy String Leader, but I got one anyway. This is very good against Priest, because Priests are like one of the worst classes of dealing with a turn one Defy String Leader. Is someone injured? And well, she's got that. God damn it. Well, uh, that sucks. Do I still do it? Yeah, I think so. 
So if he wants to kill the bandit and then heal the North Star Cleric to draw a card, that's fine. I'll just dagger backstab and kill the North Star Cleric on my turn and he's pretty much gotten nowhere. I don't mind biding time till I can play the turn four Chilwind Yeti. Priest is the other class that I would like to play. Because again, it's not very popular right now, and I feel like there's a lot of potential there that is sort of untapped at the moment. And again, uh, you want to make sure you don't, like, try to save things too much for your Auctioneer on turn 5. Uh, if you need to use something earlier, then just go ahead and use it, and that's that's the best thing you could do. Turn 3 is bad. If I don't get a Harvest Golem or a F Flesh Eating Ghoul, my third turn is going to consist pretty much of probably daggering up and remaking the dagger, which is sort of sad. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well... There aren't any saps in this deck, which is kind of what I want against that thing that just happened. Deadly Poison! Um... It's kind of a waste, because... Oh no, no, I got it. I got it. This is the move. Yes. Yes. Deadly Poison. So actually, I'm going to crash my dagger, then put Deadly Poison on it so I don't waste the Deadly Poison. And then we're going to go ahead and kill this North Strike player. Okay, good move. Ready to drop the Yeti. Yeti's good against Priests, doesn't die to Shadow Words, very difficult to kill with their removal. But if he plays a Light Spawn or something, I could be in trouble. I'd have to, well, I'd actually I'd have to use, I could use the, the Dagger and the Ringleader to kill it. That, that'd be fine, I think. In fact, that is what I will do. So this deck is a little bit more of a board control type of deck than uh, like an aggro type of deck. You're more likely to be killing your opponent's creatures than ignoring them, in a lot of cases. Until you get them like below 20 health into kind of a critical situation, then you can maybe. Okay, um, this is a little bit annoying. Definitely there's a threat of a um, divine, or of an inner fire combo, but I'm just gonna let it happen, because in the worst case, it's this plus inner fire will trade against both of my creatures, which I'm fine with. Looks like he does not have the inner fire combo. He's just going to enrage it the old-fashioned way. I would not recommend enraging my spiteful smith, good sir. That course of action is not to be advised. Oh my god, he probably has a backup plan, I'm assuming. Holy Nova, okay, and... Ah, Holy Smite, so he actually wanted to kill off my creature. Well, that was well played. Okay, here I think the move is this. Attack with the Yeti conceal and I don't know it's tricky now with this 5-5 five five, he might be able to race me out but I mean he's technically only dealing 5 damage a turn to my 8 damage a turn so at some point he's gonna have to respect my auctioneer slash yeti business oh geez that's bad oh my gosh well his creatures are just better than mine and his health total is actually pretty high if I don't get another conceal I could be in trouble Oh, uh, boy. Thalamus. Well, this would be really great if I had an Eviscerate. I don't, however. Oh, <laughs> uh, shoot. Yeah, his creatures are just better than mine. It's like, he's like a little bit more mid-rangey than I am, and then that screws me up. I can't fan a Knives. That'll enrage this even more. Uh, what the hell do you do here, honestly? All right. Well, let's shiv this and hope that we top deck into an Eviscerate. That's the best thing I can hope for, I think. Eviscerate or a Conceal. Neither has taken place. Um... I guess I'm still hoping for a Conceal or an Eviscerate. Preparation, that's not helpful. There's a Conceal. Okay, so what we do here... Let's play these guys. I'm gonna ignore his creatures. So we're gonna play Conceal again. Draw another card. I just hope that I can deal damage to him before he can kill me. So he can deal 9 damage to me. I can deal 12. And if I can get an Eviscerate, I might be able to burn him out. Maybe. Now he does have lethal now. If that's a Holy Nova, I'm screwed. But he's already used one. Okay, good. So he's just playing a creature. Okay, so it's just a matter of can I get an Eviscerate. 
And uh, I can't. All right. So is it worth playing this? I don't think it is to draw like those extra cards. I think that's just spending too much mana to draw cards. So we have to start by playing, uh, I think, Preparation. So how much damage do I need? I have 12. I need 7 damage. I currently have 0. Well, I have a dagger. So yes, I am currently very pressed. That's not going to do it. I'm going to play Fen and Knives to draw 2 cards. I'm enraging his Berserker, but it doesn't matter. Because if I don't get the Eviscerates that I need, I'm going to lose the game. So there's 1 Eviscerate. I will play this guy. And Eviscerate the face. And I need to get my other Eviscerate. Which I didn't. I think I actually lose. This is um, 8, 10, 12, 13. Well, I could still get Deadly Poison. Oh, then I can't make a dagger. I don't think there's any outs left in my deck. But I'm going to do this anyway. Perdition's Blade. That would have actually won me the game if I'd already been holding it. But as it is, I'm going to lose. Well, do I lose? I guess technically I don't lose. So I got, I got uh, 8, 10, 12. I can uh, kill the Berserker... I can kill the Dark Scale Healer. I can swing for six. And, I mean, if he's got a way to deal four damage, then he wins. Like, an Argent Commander wins him the game. Very, very simple. However, it's also possible that if he doesn't have four damage, like Holy Fire or something, like, if he has to do this kind of stuff, then I might be able to win with Perdition's Blade and another Eviscerate. He's actually going to heal up his creature. Wow. Risky move against a rogue, not healing yourself up to, from 8. Very risky move, especially with a blood mage in play. That's just asking for trouble. Perdition's Blade. Okay. Well, let's play... Oh, hang on. I have to be very careful about this. If I play the Smith and I shoot it with Perdition's Blade, I can swing for 4, 5. That's not enough. Oh, man. Okay. We have to, I think, do it like this. I'm going to combo... The Perdition's Blade, shoot, swing, swing, play a Yeti, pass the turn. So he needs six damage now, which is less likely, although an inner fire, power, like power word, shield plus inner fire, or divine spirit plus inner fire will win. I have no taunt in this deck, there's none at all, zero. So... <laughs> That might be another weakness of the deck. Maybe, like, a Defender of Argus or something in here. My opponent seems to be playing with a bad deck, to be perfectly honest. Like, it's kind of a little bit embarrassing. I think my deck's not very good that I'm struggling this much against a deck that's so bad. He's going to enrage his own guy, which makes a certain kind of sense. He needs... And he heals himself. Okay, he's going to Power Word Shield. Okay. Um, fine. And he's going to play the Big Dumb Beast. Looks like this is, like, an Inner Fire combo deck. I still can't kill him, which is really irritating. I've got, I've got uh, two, three, four, five. Oh no, four, five, six, seven damage. Okay, I actually do have the kill. That's good. So the correct way is I combo. Oh no, it's this. No, I'm wrong. I just did my math completely wrong. <laughs> Oops. Um, shit. I can deal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 damage, but I don't have another Eviscerate. I should have played the Auctioneer and backstabbed something so that I could have fished for the Eviscerate. That was silly. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to hit him in the face. I will throw this away to get a card. Flesh and Ghoul, that's nice. Well, Perdition's Blade to shoot that. What a clusterfuck of a game. Um, I'll say well played as well, because I think you're playing well, not because I'm trying to be a dick. Oh, I could have... Oh my god, I could have backstabbed this, couldn't I? If I'd backstabbed this, I could have dealt 4-5 damage. And then the Perdition's Blade would have actually killed him after shooting him. I messed up. I'm sorry, folks, that was a misplay. Anyway, yes, I could have backstabbed my Spiteful Smith to enrage it. Then I could have swung for 4 with the Perdition's Blade, hit with the Blood Mage for 5, and then played the other Perdition's Blade to shoot him to get up to seven, so really that was just embarrassingly bad. Yeah, clearly my deck's not very good, so um, yeah, let me know in the comments how I, can, how I can make it better. You constructed experts, what should I take out, what should I put in? I am thinking that there needs to be some taunts, maybe like a Defender of Argus or two. I am thinking that Shiv probably isn't very good. 
it seems that, much as I like the Flesh Eating Ghoul, that might probably not actually be a good card to put in there. And the Defy String Leader might actually not be good to put in there, although I do like having some 2-drops. Okay, so here we up against a Warlock. Not a great opening hand, but I'll keep the 2-drops. Okay, yeah, this, I, having these hands is annoying. I'd almost rather play like a, a little bit more minion heavy than uh, spell heavy as a rogue. General Havoc. Very clever name here from our friend the Warlock. Deadly Poison's a good draw, so on turn three I can f turn my dagger into a fiery war axe and go to town. As a rogue, you always want to wait for the other person to say greetings. Never say it first. Oh my god, it's turn one Elven Archer. You're not kidding me either, are you? Wow. So, daggering up to kill it is definitely tempting. And I will actually do that even though that wastes the deadly poison potential. The reason I'm doing that is that I actually kind of like the idea of having Shiv. On turn four, this plus Shiv, could, you know, for two damage. That could, that could be nice. But if some of these spells were creatures, I might be happier. He's going to life tap. That's fine. Auctioneer. Alright, so I can either ping him and then remake the dagger and put deadly poison on it to be ready for next turn. Or I can make a blood mage. Let's make the blood mage. And I will still hit him with the dagger anyway. So now next turn I can either remake the dagger and put deadly poison on it. Or I can shiv as appropriate. Perhaps even Pan of Knives, depending on how much, how many one drops he lays out. Like if he goes like, you know, flame imp, flame imp, abusive sergeant or something weird, then I, Pan of Knives would just wreck him. One shot, one Did he really just Elven Archer my face? Oh, he's gonna mortal coil my blood mage. Fair enough. Okay, well this actually looks pretty good now. So I'm not gonna dagger up. What I'm gonna do instead is uh, shiv. Let's draw a card, and that also triggers combo for the ringleader. These fans and knives, I don't know. They're basically like arcane intellects with an auctioneer in play and just total crap otherwise. I don't know if they're actually that good. I'm just trying to imagine how this deck would play against the decks that I've seen Force playing against at like rank 5, and I think it would get crushed by all those decks. The reason that we're doing as well as we are is that my opponent, my opponents are playing with weird cards. Ah, uh, he had both of his mortal coils. Well, that's a shame. Oh, uh, and he has something more to do, it seems. Nope, okay. So do I play the Auctioneer? I don't think I want to do that. I think I'd actually rather um, play Flesh and Ghoul, make a dagger, and I'm not going to swing. The intention next turn is to play the Auctioneer, Deadly Poison, kill what he played, and attack with the Ghoul. A bit far-fetched, of course, because maybe he plays a really big creature for five mana. That's always possible. Or he's going to Shadow Bolt this. Well, good thing I didn't play the Auctioneer, because that would have gotten Shadow Bolted. And he's going to Life Tap after making his turn, which is a little bit of a mistake, as we all know. Alright. Well, I think what I'll do is make a Golem. Make a Berserker. And I'm going to hold on to Deadly Poison. I still would like to play it and get a card off of it with the Auctioneer. I've got Conceals and Backstabs and Preparation, all of which would trigger off with the Auctioneer. He's going to Hellfire, which is really annoying. But the Golem comes back, and he's going to Life Tap, so he's taking a lot of damage. I might start attacking him with Deadly Poison, we'll see. It seems like he's going for, like... He could be playing, like, the Giant deck, where he's trying to, like, play the 8-8s or something. Okay. Well... You know, I really don't want to play this without Conceal. So, we're going to make a Yeti. Make a Berserker. Swing for two. Do I, swing? Do I use this? I'll hang on. I'll hold on to it. I am sacrificing a little bit of damage potential, but I think it'll be worth it. Because I'm kind of, I kind of need to get cards. And I really want to find a Conceal to protect my stuff after playing this Auctioneer. Has another Hellfire. God damn it. Does he have Demon Fire to finish this off? Or Soulfire or Shadow Bolt. It's got all the cards in the universe here. Preparation would be nice, so I could then play Fan and Ives. Man, he's just killing everything I have. That's okay, I guess. 
Uh, I cannot get a conceal to save my life. Well, we have to try. So let's eviscerate his face and hope that we can get a conceal. Nope, not a chance. Not a chance, not a chance. So we got him down to eight. But if he's got like a Molten Giant and a Defender of Argus, I just, I mean, I just lose. Maybe Sap or the Black Knight would be good in this deck against big taunters. Oh, he's gonna play Draxus. Interesting. Well, Draxus heals him up for seven and gives him an overpowered hero ability. However, um, he can't kill the Auctioneer with Jaraxxus, which is good news for me. Still can't get Concealed to save my life. Well, let's, um, fan of knives for a couple of cards. Hopefully one of them will be Conceal. It's an Eviscerate. Does that win? It does not win. Seven plus four is 11. 13. Close. Here we, here we go. I am gonna, you know, there's no point in doing it now. I might as well put out creature pressure and then save these direct damaging effects for later. Okay, so I have two plus uh, four, six direct damage, but if he puts taunt in the way, I probably can't get past it. Oh, it's a 6-6 six, six in front. That's pretty good. Is he going to Shadow Flame it? Voodoo Doctor. Well, what he needed to do here was play a free Molten Giant, then Defender of Argus to get an 8-8 eight, eight taunt and win the game. Instead, he played a bunch of crap, and he's going to lose. So yeah, against real decks, I would, I would get smashed, is the moral of this story. All right. Well, I think we win now, pretty clearly. So Fan of Knives is, seems like the most direct way of winning. So, if I fan of knives... Oh, there's the conceal. Thanks, game. Oh, you won. We clear out the taunter. I attack with my stuff. My mouse is weird. It, like, double clicks even when I single click. So, if you ever see me doing that, that's why. And we beat a warlock who had a legendary, but otherwise his deck was just bad. So, yeah. I need to fix my deck. It's possible that what I'm doing is just completely not viable. Like my whole thesis that you should make a deck with Spiteful Smith and Backstab in it. might just And, and Auctioneer, I guess, is a pretty key component. That just might not be viable in general. There might not be a good deck that exists that uses those cards. But uh, I'd like to try to make it work. I think, you know, finding the right balance of spells and creatures, plus also finding the correct creatures to put in it, would go a long way toward making it effective. I used to have SI Agent in there, but I got really annoyed by the fact that it wasn't a card you could play onto an empty board. You needed to combo it. I just, so I replaced it with Harvest Golem, which I've actually really liked because it's a very durable creature. I hate putting all like the classic creatures, you know, but you know, when I play, it's like, oh yeah, Defender Vargas would be good because I need buffs and taunt. And like, oh yeah, Shadow Sun Clark would be good because I need buffs. Like, oh yeah, Archer Commander would be good because I need direct damage sometimes. This hand is not really what you want to see as this as this, as an opening. <coughs> Up against Churd the Priest. And we go from bad to worse. Well, the Amani Berserker's fine. If it can evade a Shadow Word Pain or a 3 2 for 2, I'll be happy. He mulliganed his whole hand, so apparently he did not like what he had. Oh god, Fan of Knives. I am not happy with this card, like, ever. There's not yet been a time where I've been happy with it. Like, yes, it draws you two cards off of. The auctioneer, but still, it's actually not that great. Okay, well, um, I don't really mind playing a berserker into a North Shire cleric. That seems fine. I might even next turn play preparation and fan of knives with the berserker to kill the North Shire cleric. It's a possibility. That's if he doesn't enrage my berserker, but I don't think he would do that. That seems like a weird move. Oh, he's gonna do it. Okay, well, he might have a Holy Smite. Oh, okay, well, he might have a Holy Smite later. Oh, he's gonna heal. Oh, that's, that's, um, it's actually not clever in the slightest. 
Because yes, it turns off my enrage, and yes, it draws you a card, but now your cleric dies, and I'm enraged. Oh my god, I should have... Oops. Should have, should have played the ghoul first, eh? I got a little bit excited talking about how badly my opponent was playing, that I played badly myself. Well, anyway. Got this going on, which is pretty good. I might swing at him for seven and conceal. Who knows? We'll see. Is he going to heal this thing again to get a card? So my mistake with the Flesh Eating Ghoul really comes back to bite me, because had I played it first, this would be a 3-3 now, and I could kill the uh, North Shark Cleric with it. As it is, I cannot do that. Oh, never mind. I couldn't have done it anyway. Well, I could have. I could have attacked with both and killed it. Now I can't. Alright, he's just playing weird. Um, okay. I think the move is as follows. Yeah, if this were a 3-3, I could hit it and then combo Perdition's Blade, and that would be good. As it is, I cannot do that. So what I'm going to do is... This... Shoot it with Perdition's Blade without combo. Like this. Grow my ghoul now. Swing. And I'll play Conceal. So, he's used his coin, which means that Holy Nova is not incoming. Thus, he should not have any way of killing my Berserker. And I should be able to hit him for 8, which is kind of a lot. Takes him below 20. Yeah, he's a priest and he can heal and whatnot, but it's pretty good. Hopefully I'll get an Auctioneer. I've got the perfect setup here. Preparation into Fan of Knives to draw 3 cards. And then also put a 4-4 on the board, which should be good. Got this weapon here, which can help kill things, perhaps. And really, it is only turn 4. I've got a pretty good board for it being only turn 4. A 5-2 and a 3-3 is quite solid. This should be a 4-3, but hey... Let's not mince meat. Let's not mince meats. That's not the phrase at all. Let's not mince hairs. No, split hairs. Let's not mince something though. Isn't that a phrase somewhere? Or am I my tripping? Gadget auctioneer is perfect. Ah, oh, damn it. Well, fan of knives is all right. It's not great, but it's okay. Cause I can combo out the ringleader. The problem is that if he does have holy nova, which seems like the kind of spell a lot of people would enjoy playing, I um will lose my whole team. So I don't really want to use preparation until I get an auctioneer. Uh oh, he had it. Fuck. Wow. So the good news is that I got this big ghoul now. Bad news is if I don't get an auctioneer or a spiteful smith, I am not playing anything good. Oh, okay. Well, let's do the blood mage. Let's shiv the face just to get some cards out here. Let's shiv the face again? I don't know. Need to get cards. There's a smith, but it's a little bit late. Okay. So I used up my shiv, so I cannot enrage this myself, except for if I use backstab. But, uh, yeah, 7 1 is a little bit tricky for a priest to deal with. He's gonna Holy Nova. Okay, I guess it's not that tricky. Ah, okay. So do I do this? Or so I can get a bunch of cards? Or do I do this and dagger up? Well, I can actually, I can dagger up anyway. I might as well get all the cards. Try to get some card advantage going here. Okay, let's do that. And I guess I'm not going to attack... Actually, I am going to attack. Because eventually I'm probably going to end up putting Deadly Poison on this Perdition's Blade. This is a bit of a tricky card for a priest to kill, but um, an Argent Commander would probably be the most likely thing he would have that would kill it. Holy Fire also works, and it heals him for a bunch, which is really irritating. Okay, well, we're not going to give up. We're going to do this. Flushing Ghoul. Swing. So now we've got the combo going here. I can play Perdition's Blade without combo. <laughs> it's a combo, but without combo. <laughs> I can ping this guy. Then he gets enraged, or she gets enraged. This becomes a 4-2, 6-2... Swing for 6, 10, 12, and he's pretty low. And maybe I'll win. What is this? 3, 4. I can even coin out their combo out the ringleaders. I believe he's played two Holy Novas. So no more of that. So these are actually kind of a pain for him to deal with. And we're still a couple turns away from mind control. So I should be good. Now, of course, if you play some kind of legendary, like, you know, Ragnaros or something, that could really mess up my plans. Argent Commander. Well, that's good that he didn't have it a couple turns ago. He does get to kill my ghoul, which sucks. 
Well, backstab should be fine here. So, um, yeah. Well, uh, Perdition's Blade, my thing. I want to do that first, because I don't actually want to hit this for two. We can backstab the Argent Commander. Thank goodness that was nerfed. Play a Ringleader. Play a Golem. Play Deadly Poison. Swing for six. Boom. And, well, we are up against a priest who has eight cards. So if this doesn't get the job done, then we lose the game. That's kind of what's happening here. He can't mind control. Even if he could mind control, that really wouldn't be enough. This would still be four, six, eight, ten damage. Yeah, mind control would not do it. Killing this basically doesn't doesn't do it. That doesn't really do it. Oh, uh, I see. He's gonna wrath my board. Luckily, I keep the golem around, but he gets to kill off my spiteful smith. I could be in trouble. Deadly poison. Almost. Almost. Good enough. It gets him down to one health. Well, he's a priest, so he can heal past this. But if I... Boy, if I top deck eviscerate, I guess, I could win. If he heals up to three, dagger plus eviscerate. Oh, no, he can't heal himself. Ha! Oh, he can't heal himself. Oh, unless he kills the soul priest. Oh, you suck. So now he can heal himself. Oh no! What? What's up with these legendaries? Boo! Boo! So, um, this is bad. This is real bad. Because even if I get Eviscerate, I don't have to do enough damage, and by the time I combo it out, he's gonna... He will have healed himself enough. God damn, my mouse! Oh my god. Alright, we're gonna do this. This. Is it worth it to play the Yeti? Um, just have it die. <sighs> I don't think so. Hmm. Yeah, we just ran out of steam on that, against that, that priest. We are I was gonna do a holy fire for uh, 12 damage. Okay, well that's, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good combo there. Well he lets the Prophet get the kill. Alright, so that was that. This deck definitely needs a little bit of help. Good thing I can't lose stars. Woo! I need to get another mouse. Um, and you know what? I'm going to actually pause this video a little bit early because, yes, I need to play another mouse. Otherwise, I'm going to start losing games from my mouse um, <laughs> double-clicking when I mean it to single-click. So anyway, here's the deck list one more time. Clearly, the deck needs some work. So let me know in the comments what you think can be done to improve it, and let me know if this is a series that you're really even interested in at all. I mean, it is playing the same deck a lot, so it might not be as exciting as Arena. So I'm curious to hear if people want to watch this. I'll be keeping an eye on the view count and seeing if it's worth keeping on doing. But that was the first episode of Quest to Legend, and I'll see you soon with some more action. Till then.